Hello YouTube, Mr. Patino here with another read aloud. We're going to continue reading Discovering Mars from our Journeys textbook. Today we'll be reading Segment 2, pages 12 through 17. The Martians are coming! On Halloween Eve, October 30th, 1938, many Americans were listening to a program of dance music on CBS Radio Network. Suddenly, the broadcast was interrupted. The announcer read an urgent news bulletin. People had seen brilliant flashes of light coming from Mars. After the news, the dance music started again. A few minutes later, the announcer cut in once more. He sighed deeply after he reported the latest development. A blazing meteor had just landed in New Jersey. Soon the network had a reporter on the scene. In great excitement, he told how Martians were pouring out of their spaceship. They were turning their deadly heat ray guns on anyone with, within range. All at once, the reporter's voice was cut off. It sounded though he had been killed by, Martian, by a Martian. Other announcers picked up the story. They described the Martians' conquest of New Jersey, and they warned that the Martians were advancing on New York City. Panic spread among the listeners. Some grabbed their belongings, jumped in cars, and started driving away from the menace. Others locked their doors and, and windows of their houses and hid in the basements and cellars. A few brave souls went out to fight the invaders. In New Jersey, a group of farmers thought they saw the Martian spaceship. They fired their rifles at a strange dark shape. By the end of the radio program, everyone realized what had happened. The evasion of the Martians was a made-up story. But more than one million people had believed what they heard. Most of them had taken every word to be true. The farmers who had fired on the spaceship were most embarrassed. The morning following the broadcast, they found out that they had shot several holes in the town's water tower. People were easily fooled because they wanted to believe that there were intelligent beings on Mars. Some went even further. They were sure that Martians wanted to conquer Earth. Exploring Mars from Earth Radio and television programs, books, and movies invent lots of stories about Mars. But astronomers are also looking but astronomers are also making many exciting, true-to-life discoveries about the Red Planet. In the year 1877, astronomer Asaph Hall in Washington, D.C. made an astounding discovery. He found that Mars, like Earth, has a moon. In fact, he saw that Mars has two moons. He gave them Greek names, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos means fear, and Deimos means panic. According to Greek legend, Phobos and Deimos were the sons of Mars, the god of war. Asaph Hall Phobos looks like a big black potato in the sky. It tumbles about as it circles Mars. Although Phobos is the larger of the two moons, it is quite small. It is only 17 miles in diameter. Earth's moon is much bigger, over 2,000 miles in diameter. The path Phobos follows around Mars is called its orbit. The orbit of Phobos is very close to Mars. It's only about 3,750 miles from the surface of Mars. Earth's moon's orbit is 240,000 miles away. The other moon, the other Mars moon, Deimos, has the same potato shape as Phobos, but it is much smaller. It is less than 10 miles long. Deimos orbits it. Deimos's orbit is far from the planet, about 12,000 miles. Right, Deimos, Mars' smaller moon. It has some large craters. Below, Phobos, the larger moon, with Mars in the background. And that is segment two of Discovering Mars. Hope you enjoyed reading with Mr. Patino. Have a good day, YouTube. Bye.